Good morning, afternoon, or evening. It's Deacon Tim Lyman here from RCIA. This is an RCI update. It's July 1st, and I just thought I wanted to put a few things on video since we're not having a session this week. For those of you that were not here uh, this past week, um, and for those of you that are doing independent study and are never here, just kind of wanted to put some things on this video for you this week. Um, so again, it's July 1st. We're not meeting this week. For those of you that come uh, normally during Thursday night, we won't be meeting this week. Hopefully, everybody's spending time with your sponsors and uh, keeping in contact with them, and especially that's one of the reasons we program these weeks into the schedule, so that you would have that time to spend with your sponsor, talking about what you're experiencing, what you're learning, questions you have. Um, a lot of things have happened this week with the Supreme Court decision. Perhaps you want to talk about that with your sponsor. Um, so anyway, again, hopefully you're spending that time and, and doing that. Uh, the first thing I wanted to put on here is just about our upcoming rites, the rite of acceptance, which is going to be on at the 5 p.m. Saturday Vigil Mass on July 11th, and that's for the catechumens, or soon-to-be catechumens, not baptized. Uh, they will be going through the rite of acceptance at that 5 p.m. Mass. And then we have the two right of, of welcomings for the candidates, those of you that are baptized. That's at uh, 9 a.m. Mass on Sunday, July 12th. And the second one of those at this time is the 11, uh, the 11.15 a.m. Mass on Sunday, July 26th. I have just about everybody in now. I know you're going to be, and it, actually the numbers worked out great. We're about split evenly between the two rites of welcoming. So uh, for the few of you that I don't have, I will be contacting you this week on the phone to, to get that worked out. Um, this, the link to this video I'm sending out with a note, and in that note there's some information. Hopefully you can read through that. Um, I've attached the two scripts. So a script for the right of acceptance and a script for the right of welcoming. And as we've talked about in class, they are similar but there's differences, so make sure you're looking at the right script uh, based on who you are, whether you're the un unbaptized, the catechumen, or the baptized, uh, soon-to-be candidate, and uh, you can read through those scripts. Uh, what I'd ask is, don't get hung up in all the details. Uh, your sponsor's going to be there, I will be there, the deacon, and if I'm not the deacon at the mass, there will be a deacon there. You'll have people to tell you when to move, when to get up. Um, I want you to become familiar with the, with the flow, but not get hung up and you know, memorizing every little detail. Um, so read through the script to just get familiar with the flow, and I've tried to put in comments. You'll notice, I think it'll be pretty clear when you look at it, the red text is, is instructions and directions. Anything that people are gonna say is in black. Um, so you'll see the color coding when you bring this up uh, from the email. Um, and again, don't get hung up in all the responses. The responses are one-word answers, two-word answers at most, and you're, most of those are going to be done, in fact, all of them are going to be done as a group. So you're not going to be on the spot, you having to say something uh, yourself. So uh, I would just encourage you to look through the script, get familiar with the flow in general, but don't get too hung up on all the details. Um, in fact, here's what I would recommend, is that you actually begin to pray with these scripts. And by that I mean there's some beautiful prayers that make up these rites, and those prayers really talk about the essence of what you're doing as part of this rite. So, yes, I know the first time you're going to read through here kind of looking for the flow and what's going to happen and where am I going to be standing and what am I going to do, and that's fine, that's natural. But beyond that, I would ask you to take that script to your prayer space or wherever you pray, and, and begin to kind of use it as a way to reflect. And again, not to read all the details when you're doing that reflection, but to look for those prayers that the priest says, the prayers of the signing of the cross that you're going to read about. Read those, and, and, and again, not reading from an intellectual, just pumping the information into your head, but more of letting that wash through you and, and really try to understand what this rite is taking you through, transporting you through, transforming you, hopefully, um, to move on to this end of this process. So again, take that time to reflect on those prayers and the responses 
and really just spend time with it. Don't feel like you got to go through the whole thing. You need to go through it several times during the next week or 10 days or until your right happens, then please do that. I really recommend you do that. I think you'll get so much more out of it uh, so that when you actually go through the right, it won't be, um, you'll, you'll have a familiarity with it. So please take that time to do that and really reflect on, on all the prayers that are in there. Um, I would ask you to be at the cathedral no later than 15 minutes before whatever mass you're in here starts. And we are going to have pews reserved, and you'll see this in the script, up in the uh, front left side. If you're looking at the altar, it'll be on the left, which is on the baptismal font side. So there'll be some pews reserved for sponsors and candidates. Um, and that's where I want you to be no later than 15 minutes before the start of Mass. We'll go over a few things at that point, answer any questions you have. Mainly, I just also want to know who is here so I can actually check you off and make sure that you are there for the right. Because um, I may have to make a last minute adjustment in the script if you're not there. So, uh, 15 minutes before the Mass starts, we be in those pews so we can do that very quickly. Um, I also want to give you time. I don't want to be talking to you up till right before Mass starts. So I do want to give you some time that you can actually just be there and reflect and, and, and be preparing yourself for what's going to happen. Um, and again, when we do get together on uh, July 9th, which is our next time together, we will take some time after the speaker uh, to go up to the cathedral and actually we're not going to walk through everything in detail, but I'll at least kind of walk you quickly through what's going to happen up in the cathedral so you'll, you'll get a sense of that. And, and again, I can answer any question you have about the right. So you probably want to bring your script with you on the 9th that you can print out now that you've got it and bring that with you on for our July 9th session. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to say about the, the upcoming rights. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. Um, and see if I can answer those questions. This next thing is uh, really for those of you that were not in last week's session, so you, uh, you might, this will be a reminder for those of you that were. Um, one of the parts or one of the main ideas of the RCIA process is that it's not like you're waiting till the end of the process when you actually are received into the church or at the Easter vigil for the catechumens when they're baptized and, and fully initiated into the faith. That's not when you should start getting involved, you know, in the life of the church, in the life of this parish. So what I wanted to emphasize to you is as you're going through this process, you should already be thinking about, um, you know, what has God gifted you with? What has God blessed you with? What kind of talents, skills, the charisms, what charisms has God gifted you with? Um, what passions do you have? Uh, for people or you know whatever it might be how can you participate in the life of this church so when we come to these Thursday sessions as I've always said it's very easy to reduce these to okay we're covering some topic and um, you're learning some new information hopefully um, but if that's all this process is you've missed the boat and you are missing the boat so uh, with your sponsors help uh, with my help if needed I really want to encourage you to begin thinking about how you can become involved in the life of this church, the life of this parish. And, um, and this is not about, again, another checkbox that you need to check off in the process. This is about becoming a member of the church and part of the responsibility of being a member is, that, is to give your time and talent and the treasure, ultimately, to what's going on in the church. And so, that starts now, right? That starts as you're going through this process. So uh, I guess my plea to you, my exhortation to you, is to really start thinking about that, praying about that, asking for guidance from God. You know, what would God have you do as a member of this church that you're working your way towards? And, and go ahead and get involved. I think some of you may already be doing so. Um, but again, talk to your sponsors, talk to me, um, I will bring in next time on July 9th, I'm going to have some parish directories here that talk about all the ministries that are here at the parish and all the opportunities that exist. Um, and as I told the folks that were here last week, 
um, don't hesitate to call some of these. Like if you have a great voice and you can sing, even if you're not you know, stage quality, but if you have a decent voice and you would like to or help us worship by contributing your voice, go talk to the music ministry folks and just say, hey, can you tell me about the music ministry here? How does it work? How often do you have to, you know, how do you, how do you get into the groups and, and, and what's involved with that? Um, and again, it's not like you can, you know, again, this is not some checkbox. Okay, I got to do this so Deacon Tim will get off my case. It's, I want, you know, the church wants you to be a part of what's going on. You're, you know, you were gifted with some talents and, and skills, and God wants you to use those. And so during this process, I just want you to be thinking about that, praying about that, working through your sponsor or me or others in the parish, and we'll help you get involved in something that you are passionate about or that you care about or that you want to be involved in. And, and that's really the plea here, that, that as we go through this process, uh, for however long you're a part of this process, that ought to be part of it, is, is, is that um, element of becoming involved in the life of the church. Because when you are received into the church, it ought to be just sort of a completion of something that's well underway. Um, and not just, okay, now that you've received into the church, now you're going to start thinking about how to get involved. That's, that's not the intent here. So um, let's think about that. If you have questions, please, again, don't hesitate to talk to your sponsors and let them give you some advice and guidance on that. Um, also, related to that, you know, I just wrote looked down in my notes, you know, come to Mass. If you're not worshiping in Mass, some of you are, I see you there, it's wonderful. Um, but if you're not coming to Mass on a regular basis, um, again, I think you're missing part of the boat because this, you know, the Mass is the source and summit of our worship as a people. So if you're not part of that, and I know you're still learning, trying to become familiar with the Mass and what all the parts and what do we say and why do we do these things, I get that. It's, it's comp it can be complicated. But just come and worship with us to the extent you can. And, and then, you know, ask your sponsor questions when you see things. Listen to the prayers in the Mass. Listen to the readings. Listen to the homily. Um, and be a part of the worship. When you're there, grab a bulletin. And the bulletin is just chock full of information about different things going on in the parish. And again, so that you can become, begin to become familiar, become comfortable, that this is your, this is going to be, is really already your church family. And you need to be a part of that, just like any other family. So um, again, um, take that bulletin with you, scan it over it, and uh, when you see a contact name in the bulletin, you see something you might be interested in, please don't hesitate to call. We have great people here. They're always willing to hear from new folks that might be interested in what they're doing, um, and they'll answer your questions. So please take advantage of that and do that as you're moving through this process. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Um, Again, we'll meet, we won't be meeting tomorrow. This is July the 1st, so I guess the 2nd. We won't be meeting this week. We'll be up, pick up again next week on the 9th. And look forward to seeing you. We'll be going through the right, more details on the right. And we'll have a wonderful Father Jim Sitchko, I believe, is our speaker. You're going to really enjoy him. So please come. Encourage your sponsors to come. Uh, I will be filming the, the talk as well. So if you can't make it, don't worry. But uh, I think you'll really enjoy it if you're here to be, experience uh, Father Jim Sitchko as well. So, and like I said, after the speaker, we will go up to the cathedral and spend a bit of time just going through the, the rites very quickly, getting a little bit familiar with them. So bring your scripts next week. And I think that's it. I hope everybody has a great 4th of July weekend. It's a good time, uh, hopefully a little time off from work. And we'll look forward to seeing you next Thursday, July 9th at 6.30 p.m. right here in this room. Have a great 4th, everybody, and God bless you.